Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. Today we are talking about sickness. Specifically when Anne Boleyn got the sweating sickness early on in her relationship with Henry VIII. If you are new here, very warm welcome to you. My name is Heather and I have been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. This channel right here is where I put all of my podcast episodes from all of my shows as well as lots of extra content like this video right here. Quick reminder, TudorCon is coming up. I've been saying this every day and I'm going to keep saying it. We're about six weeks away from TudorCon, September 8th through 10th in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Three days of Tudor lectures, feasting, new friendships, entertainment, all kinds of Tudor goodness. You can go to englandcast.com slash TudorCon to learn more about the in-person tickets. Or you can also come via the magic of the interwebs. Englandcast.com slash TudorCon online will be your link for that. So you've got some time, but I am going to cut off in-person ticket sales in about a month because I'm going to have to finalize numbers with caterers and stuff like that. Streaming tickets, you don't have a deadline. You can do that however, whenever you want. Um, but in-person tickets, you have about a month to get your tickets. So englandcast.com slash TudorCon for all the details on that. So today we are going to venture into a grim chapter of the Tudor period. We'll be talking about the sweating sickness, a mysterious and deadly disease that terrorized England throughout the 16th century. And we're also going to talk about it uh, through the eyes of Anne Boleyn and the time when she got the sweating sickness very early on in her relationship with Henry VIII. So the sweating sickness is also known as the sweat it, or the English sweat. It was highly contagious, often very deadly, and it first appeared in England in the very late 15th century. Its symptoms were very sudden, very severe. Victims would suffer from fever, headaches, profuse sweating, often leading to death within hours. Its cause remains unknown, adding to a layer of mystery to this horrifying disease. John Caius was a physician in Shrewsbury in 1551 during an outbreak of the sweat. And he wrote a book. It was called A Book of Counsel Against the Disease Commonly Known, Commonly Called the Sweat or Sweating Sickness. And his work is our chief window into understanding the disease itself. He painted a vivid, chilling picture of the sweating sickness. It would start suddenly. And there would be an icy sense of dread creeping up on the victims, followed by very violent shivers. That would be followed by dizziness, headaches, severe pains. The symptoms were swift and severe. And just as you were coming to terms with the cold, the heat would take over. A sudden, unexplainable sweat would break out, accompanied by a burning sensation, delirium, and an insatiable thirst. Also, an overwhelming sleepiness that Caius warned could be fatal if you succumb to it. The disease would run its brutal course in just one day, leading to either death or recovery. There was a physician called Thomas Forstier who saw the first outbreak of the sweat in 1485, and he talked about the breathlessness that would accompany the final hours of the sufferers which leads some people to think there was a pulmonary aspect of the disease. He talked about loathsome vapors around the heart and lungs. So the sweat first appeared after Henry VII won the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. Some people actually postulate that Richard III had the sweat, which would um, explain his sleepless night the night before the battle. Um, there are some historians who suggest that that might have happened. He also apparently had excessive thirst during the beginning of the battle. So who knows? Um, after claiming victory, Henry went to London and the sweating sickness then arrived in London just a few weeks later on September 19th. Of course, the Battle of Bosworth was 1485. By the time it had run its course in October, the disease had claimed the lives of thousands of people, including Tapu, Lord Mayors six aldermen, and three sheriffs. The sickness was not recorded in England from between 1492 and 1502, and at that point, it came back again. Some people actually think it might have been what killed Arthur, Prince of Wales, and made Catherine of Aragon very sick as well in March 1502. 
Their illness was described as a malign vapor, which proceeded from the air. Researchers who opened Arthur's tomb in 2002 could not determine the exact cause of death. Catherine, of course, recovered, but Arthur died at Ludlow Castle. Interestingly, the sweating sickness seemed to target the young and affluent, often hitting urban areas, striking down the most active members of society. The disease came in five major outbreaks, one of which we'll focus on today, the one in 1528. That one, 1528, was particularly severe and caused a great panic in London. The king was terrified, and he would often flee London to avoid the plague and avoid the sweat. But during this outbreak, the disease would strike closer to home than ever before. This was when Anne Boleyn, who was still his early love interest then and a pivotal figure in his break with Rome, uh, caught the sweating sickness, which was a grave concern for Henry, of course. Their relationship was at a crucial juncture at this point. Anne had not yet become his queen, but she already had significant influence over him and they were deeply entwined. News of Anne's sickness would have been devastating for Henry. She had gone home to get away from the sweating sickness. Um, despite his royal status, he was helpless in the face of this disease. He couldn't visit her for fear of infection. He had to resort to writing letters to express his concern and offer his emotional support. In one, he wrote, the unease I feel in being absent from you could not be greater than it is. This quote not only sheds light on his affection for Anne, but also the dread and uncertainty that he faced. Incredibly, Anne survived the sweating sickness, a rare event given the disease's high mortality rate. The survival marked a turning point in her relationship with Henry, and of course, they would marry later. Henry had sent his second best doctor to take care of Anne. The first best doctor was indisposed, but by the time he had arrived, Anne was already on the road to recovery. Her experience with the sweat offers a vivid snapshot of the uncertainty and fear that gripped Tudor England during these outbreaks. Another family that suffered from the sweat, another noble family, was, of course, the Brandon family. Catherine Willoughby lost two of her sons when they were studying away at college, um, both of them within hours of each other. So it was a disease that would strike anybody, of course, and nobody was completely safe from it. And they still don't know what caused it. So that's a little bit about the sweat and Anne Boleyn getting the sweating sickness Thank you so much for watching. If you have made it to the end of this video and enjoyed it, I hope I earned your press of that like button and even a subscription to my channel where I post videos like this almost every day. It helps me grow the channel and reach more people. And also who doesn't want their YouTube algorithm tutorified? I do. So thank you so much. I will talk to you again very soon. And remember to drink a lot of water, you guys. It's hot out there. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.